name is Henrietta Heald and I have written a book called Magnificent Women and Their Revolutionary Machines. It is a celebration of the trailblazers who established the Women's Engineering Society a century ago. Discovery Museum has asked me to choose some objects from their collection which particularly interest me and I'd like to start today by talking about an object that no visitor to the museum could possibly miss because it occupies most of the space in the entrance hall and that is of course Turbinia, the wonderful little ship designed by Charles Parsons to demonstrate the efficiency of his invention, the compound steam turbine, which would go on to revolutionise the propulsion of ships and make possible the generation of electricity on a vast scale. However, it is not Charles Parsons who I want to talk about today, but his daughter Rachel, who was also a pioneering engineer. From a very young age, Rachel liked nothing better than to spend hours with her father in his workshop at the family home at Wylam in Northumberland. There she absorbed all sorts of information about engineering and later she took part in some of the speed trials involving Tabinia off the Tyne. And this whole experience instilled in Rachel a lifelong love of engineering which was encouraged by her mother Catherine. Rachel went on to become the first woman to study mechanical sciences at Cambridge University. And this was in 1910, at a time when very few women were at university at all, let alone studying engineering. During the First World War, Rachel was made a director of her father's firm, C.A. Parsons, at Heaton. There, she supervised hundreds of women in the construction of steam turbines and other items produced by the company, including searchlights. The women workers had taken the place of men who were off fighting with the armed forces, and some became highly skilled. The wartime photo album of Heaton Works, which is held at Tyne and Weir Archives, is the best record we have of some of the many tasks carried out by women during this period. I discovered the album by chance during my research for Magnificent Women. Rachel later joined the Ministry of Munitions and travelled all over the country instructing women in various engineering skills. It was an experience that opened her eyes to the wide range of work that women were capable of. After the war, when women were ejected from the factories and told they were no longer required, both Rachel and her mother were very angry about this and they argued that this was a terrible waste of both money and human resources to, as they put it, throw hundreds of thousands of women onto the scrap heap. And so this provided the impetus for them to set up the Women's Engineering Society in 1919. Rachel was installed as the first president of the society and she devoted much of the rest of her life to campaigning for women's employment rights. So when I see Tabinia, I think not just of Charles Parsons' record-breaking achievements, but also of the idealistic young girl standing at his side at the wheel with her hair streaming behind her and dreaming of great things as the little vessel raced through the waves outpacing all other ships afloat.